Today I am going to swap the axle on this uh, 81 Accord. Uh, first thing I did was I made sure to put the e-brake on and uh, put it in first gear, although I also used these, as you can see, um, to try and stop the wheel from moving. Uh, if you're lucky and you have a friend handy, your best bet is actually to get somebody to hold the brake. So while everything's still on the ground, you're going to do that so that you can uh, pop this spindle nut loose. And to be honest, this will probably be a big pain in the butt. What I did was I used a little uh, PB blaster. This is a 32 millimeter nut. Big Bertha here didn't want to do the trick all by herself, so I also recruited her friend. Um, any good length of pipe will work. Um, you want something good and solid though, obviously. I would recommend this. Uh, chances are if you're just trying to do it with this, you're going to have a bad time. Don't give up if, it, if it's not working for you. Put that back on, give it a couple smacks of the hammer after you've sprayed it with PB Blaster and hopefully that stuff will work its way in. There is other techniques you can look up online as well. Um, you can use heat, although you want to be careful with that. And uh, another interesting one I saw was using heat on one side and using wax on the other. Either or, um, this is probably going to be the hardest part. I'll keep my fingers crossed that I'm, that I'm correct. elevated and we've uh, taken the, the wheel off um, got it all set up on jack stands and uh, I'm gonna show something here you're gonna want to pop this nut off um, you're gonna have to drain your transmission or you you really should because when you pop this axle out uh, oil is gonna come out For our next step, what we're going to do is we're actually going to disconnect this lower control arm. Um, in order to do that, we're going to undo this bolt right here. Uh, you're going to need a 17 millimeter for that. And now with that bolt removed, we uh, got our lower control arm. At least one end of it is loose. And on to the next step, which will be to undo these. And uh, what I'm actually going to do is these are 14 millimeters, and your best bet is to hold this top one with a wrench. And then use a socket and come at it from underneath. The lower control arm is now disconnected from the uh, well, from the chassis and from the radius rod, as you can see. Now that that's all disconnected, we're going to finish spinning this, taking the spindle nut off. And you might want to set that aside. You may need it. Um, Whenever you replace an axle, you should get a new spindle nut with it. Um, if you don't, well, you really should go find one. Now that we've gotten that popped off, we're gonna, we thankfully have some play here. Um, if your spindle is still kind of stuck in, one thing you can do is take the old spindle nut and screw it in there just a bit so you still have a gap. You can see that gap there and uh, you can use your socket and uh, give it a couple whacks in the hammer and uh, that should hopefully 
push that in and uh, maybe break it loose with the help of a, of a little PB blaster. But thankfully I won't have to do that today. Okay, well there's one end and uh, now we're going to need to pop out the next, the other end. And what we are going to do for that is you need to get a screwdriver. Now you don't want to go in too deep. Um, you just want to make sure that you're hitting the metal and uh, bracing against the metal of the transmission. And what you're going to do is uh, you're going to use a screwdriver and you're going to pry it out. As you can see, I get that first little pop, it just popped right out of there. Before I install a new one, I'm actually going to kind of pre-prep it a little bit. I'm uh, using some wheel bearing grease. Uh, you just want any really high temperature grease I think would do the trick. But uh, I'm going to use some wheel bearing grease and I'm going to uh, put it around here. And what this will do is it will prevent the uh, seal on the transmission from burning up. Because that seal is going to ride right along this surface here. So uh, you don't want just bare rubber against uh, bare metal. So I'm going to put a little grease on there. I'm also going to put a little grease on uh, the end here. And uh, what that will do is it will prevent this spring clip from floating around uh, while I'm trying to install it. Um, it will keep it centered so that when I go to push it in, it will compress the spring clip, closing that, that little gap there. And, uh, it will just go in a little bit easier. I'm also going to put some on the other end, or on the outer end. Um, put a little along here, as there is another seal around the wheel bearing. And uh, I might even put a little tiny bit around the spindle here on the splines just to ease ease insulate installation and also allow me to take it out a lot easier um, if I ever need to replace it again uh, it'll just make sure it slides out easily Now that it's all prepped and ready to go back in, um, I'm going to put this end in first. And what I'm going to do is, uh, well, it'll line up when you slide it in there, but it won't necessarily just go in all that easily. Um, so one good trick to use is you can kind of turn it a little bit until uh, until you find the get the splines all lined up, and then give it uh, give it some constant pressure, but uh, with one hand and then try and kind of jiggle the end with the other and uh, it might fight you at first but it should end, end up popping right in. Well there's one half in and a uh, little reminder um, <laughs> you might want to leave your car in gear when you do this um, it'll stop the transmission from spinning around. I mean it won't hurt if it's out of gear but uh, I just found it was uh, a little bit easier. It uh, held the transmission in place when I went to went to twist the axle to kind of line up the splines, and uh, for the most part, it went in pretty easily, um, except for the last little step. And uh, I gave it a good shove and uh, kind of hammered it a little bit. Uh, not didn't actually use a hammer, but uh, I just used the other end of the axle and. Uh, gave it a good couple knocks and then it just popped right in. Now 
And now for the second half, we're going to do the other end. Um, you can kind of pull this out of the way. I was able to uh, basically just wiggle the axle around and uh, kind of rotate it back and forth. Um, you could also just move the disc until uh, until those splines find their find their spot. Um, then it's just a matter of a little wiggling and a little English, and it will uh, eventually push its way through. And now that it seems to be through all the way, I am going to uh, put this new spindle nut on. And uh, I'm not going to crank it down yet. I can't really set it to proper torque till it's uh, till the car's back on the ground, anyways. So the next step is to uh, rehook up the lower control arm to the chassis, and uh, also to hook up this radius rod to the lower control arm. Now the thing is, since all the tension has been broken off this, um, this really doesn't want to line up properly to put the bolts back through. So what you're going to need to do is actually support the weight of the vehicle um, on the lower ball joint and you're going to want to jack it up a little bit. Now the factory manual calls, tells you to do that before putting this bolt back in. However, when I did that, this whole assembly wants to flop out and the whole, uh, the whole hub assembly wants to fly out at me. And uh, the jack basically just acts like a giant spring. And yeah, so things uh, got a little bit dangerous for a second there. So what I'm going to do instead is I just I was able to move the lower control arm around by hand uh, to get it lined back up, and I just ran the bolt back in. I haven't tightened it down yet, but I made sure that it spanned the whole the whole mount, and uh, so that this lower control arm isn't going to going to come towards me or anything like that. So now. I'm going to jack it up under the ball joint and that should hopefully push up this control arm enough that it will line up with the radius rod and then I can just bolt it in and uh, I will do that next. So now that I have the weight of the vehicle supported on the jack, or well supported by the wheel assembly, um, I am going to put the bolts through here. So, torque them down while I'm at it. Those are going to be torqued to 40 foot pounds, and then I will also torque this down to 40 foot, uh, well, no, 36 foot pounds as well. And then I will use one of these lock tabs. Then I will use one of these tabs uh, to lock the, lock the nut in. Now that I've gotten all that back together and I still have it jacked up, I am now going to crack this nut right here. And uh, this is the refill hole. And what I will do is I'm going to fill that full of 40 weight oil until it just starts to drip off the sides. Um, you could do this after you lower the car off the jacks, but I'm just doing it while it's still up on jacks just so it's a little bit easier to slide the oil pan down underneath there.